Just a quick plug before the video starts. Go to DrewingRider.com. If you're interested in $40 jerseys, there's a couple left that did sell out. I apologize for that. We've got more coming down the track. My two ebooks, Carb the Fuck Up and Drew Rider's Lean Body Bible. The best ebooks if you want to get seriously lean and live a seriously simple, basic digital nomad lifestyle and save a shit ton of money, earn great money, meet cool people, inspire people, and get the best results you've ever got could imagine in your life. Go to DrewRider.com, get my latest ebooks. Game changes, guaranteed. All right, let me show you my pussy. Um, this is a little... So the question, the video here is about why are Indian cyclists getting fat? I've got a, apparently I've got a big audience in India. A little feral pussy is getting very, very tame. We'll put my pussy down there. Let's, where is my phone when you need it? It was basically, here we go. It was um, actually wrong one. There we go. So yeah, basically from India, with love. Um, Duran Rider, uh, greetings from Mumbai. Uh, we have a large uh, cyclist group here who follows your stuff. Could you please do a video touching on why so many Indians, uh, people from India, get obese? What is the issue? Is it the rice? Is it the ghee? Is it the fat they eat? What is the deal? I think I already know the answer. Thank you, uh, Muhammad from Mumbai. So, is Muhammad a copula Indian name? I don't, I'm not sure. But Natasha is actually uh, from India. So, this video could be titled How I Keep My Indian Wife Slim. So, Natasha here in the outdoor shower, slim. Um, cyclists, let's talk about it. Let's get straight into the video. Let's, just, let's, let's, let's talk about tasty nuts. All right. So, this is a snack. This one is from. This is from. Nagpur in India. It's Old Party Naka Road, and it's from Nagpur in India. Now, this is just this is a vegan snack. It's peanuts and oil, and it's forty-two grams of fat per packet. And you got a hundred, so you got about sixty grams of fat in here. Sixty grams of fat in one. I could eat. This, I could eat this easily. This is be easy to eat as a little snack. We also have another snack here. Which I just tipped out in the garden because I found it a bit too greasy. But I wanted to try them anyway. This is called uh, um, Bujasev. Buj Bujasev. And it's it got 43 grams of fat. It's 150 grams. So another 60 grams of fat. And I could easily eat both these packets in a sitting. Easily. This one's also from Nagpur. So we've got two little packets of snacks here. Which I could easily eat. It's 120 grams of fat. If I'm eating that every day. In a week. That's... You know, that's almost a kilo of fat. So I could gain 50 kilos of fat in a year. I could become obese in a year. Just from eating two bags, small bags. This is not much food. This is like 300 grams of food. That's nothing for me. I could gain 50 kilos in one year. Right? If I keep everything the same, I'm going to gain 50 kilos of pure fat. The little pussy is still just hanging around. Right? If you want pussy to st stick around, feed it good. Feed it good. All right, so this is another little question there, little puss. Um, anyway, so rice. Did, what do the lean Indians eat? What does Natasha eat when I met her in the village? Rice. You got 10 grams of fat per kilo. All right, and that's healthy fats. So you got 10 grams there. So if you eat a kilo a day, that's only 70 grams of fat a week. 70 grams of fat a week. Feasting, 70 grams of fat a week versus a kilo. 70 grams versus a kilo. That's like $70 versus $1,000. Go to a dinner, cost you 70 bucks to two people. Go to a dinner, cost you 1,000 bucks to two people. Yeah, big difference there. So 70 grams a week eating a kilo of rice a day, which is a lot of rice, which is tough. I can't eat a kilo of rice a day unless I'm really fucking hungry really hungry these two little bags snack things here are easily eat easily eat that so this is why our indian friends and australian friends and american friends and french friends and german french and friends from luxembourg are getting so fat and so obese because the hidden fat in foods is just getting stored sticking to your ribs sticking to your butt and your gut sugar on the other hand it gets peed out you pee it out 
you can't turn sugar into fat under normal circumstances, unless maybe you're recovering from anorexia, which most people are. That's a very, very rare mental health condition. So most people aren't recovering from anorexia. I deal with a lot of people who uh, recover from anorexia over the last 20 years, and so that's a special sort of deal there. And we see adaptive thermogenesis occurring, which is fine, which is normal. It's healthy. It's good to be healthy. But the average person, obese person walking down the street, they're fat because of all the fat they eat. And it could be vegetable fat, it could be chicken fat, animal fat, whatever. And obviously the animal fat comes with all the ethical issues, the environmental issues, the cholesterol issues, the metabolic or base products, the heterocyclic amine issues, the hormonal issues that are found in the animal products. And that can also cause cascade more hormonal issues in the body. So if you're going to have fat, you always want to have plant fat, vegan fat, vegetable fat. But even then, you still want to keep it low fat. Unless you're severely underweight, if you're underweight and you need to get some fat on that little pussy bones, then it's okay to have more fat. But if you're a bit tub tub, if you're a little fat cat, then I would definitely do your best to keep your fat intake low. Every gram of fat you eat is the fat you wear. Every gram of carbohydrate you eat gets turned into sugars or eaten as sugars and gets burned by your body, your cells. You cannot overeat on carbohydrate. You can't. This example here, these two little bags of peanuts and oil and stuff, so easy to eat. Just I could just snack on that, boom, 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 done. I have to use, I have to use, I'd pour this in the garden. I'd use discipline, say, no, 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 I don't, I don't too much fat. I, don't, you know, I have a cloudy head and pimples and insulin resistance. So I, I, I tried it, and I was like, nah, it's pour it in the garden. It's just, it's just too greasy. It's just too greasy. Rice, on the other hand, this stuff's self-limiting. You can't eat more rice than you need. Let's be fucking honest. You can't eat more rice than you need. It just fills you up, and you're like, oh, I'm full. You can't have more sugar than you need. You're like, oh, no more sweet. I'm done. But this little hidden fat stuff, you just keep chowing it down until you've got so many fat grams in your meal. Next day, you've got insulin resistance. So you not only do you get the fat, you get the insulin resistance. And so this double whammy, insulin resistance, it causes elevated fasting insulin. Not just a spike in your insulin, but your insulin actually stays up there. Spikes are fine. It's when your insulin stays high, you go into this weight-gaining anabolic state. Insulin is an anabolic hormone used by bodybuilders all over the world to promote growth, weight, and gain. So if you want to gain more weight, eat more foods that trigger insulin, fat is the main one. Then second would be protein. All right? So lastly would be carbohydrate. But you need to eat carbohydrates. We don't need much fat at all. Very, very minimal, yet sufficient. And all the fat you need, all your omega-3s is found in all your fruits and veggies. So as long as you're eating enough fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables are healthy. I know the TV says otherwise, but fresh fruits and vegetables are healthy, kids. So if you, as long as you eat enough fresh fruits and veggies, you get everything you need. And you throw in some rice and some steamed potatoes, baked potatoes, but really do your best to avoid fried. Just do an experiment for 60 days, all right? Go back to eating all the fatty, clogging stuff you, you, you raised on or whatever. But just do it a 30-day experiment or two months even better. You know, two years, 20 years would be best. But let's, okay, let's go for 30 days. Just do an experiment. No overt fats, meaning no oil, no animal products, maybe no avocado, no margarine. Just for 30 days. Just try it. You know, just do that. And just notice how clean you feel. You feel clean. Your skin gets a bit more glow. Your performance in the bike goes up. Your brain function at work goes up. But make sure, eat enough carbohydrate. Eat as much as you want. Eat as much as you want. If you're still hungry, more carbs. Still hungry, more carbs. Eat until you are done. You know, it's like when you're having sex. Fuck till you drop. It's like going on the toilet. Piss till you're done. Who goes to the bathroom? Or who, who pees in the bushes? And just had, does a little twinkle. Oh, I'm going to store some more pee for later on. No, you go till you're done. Eat till you're done. And when you with fatty foods, you have to restrict it, don't you? Because if you eat this till you're done, you gain five kilos a fucking week. Right? I could get obese in three or four months. Easy. Easy. I could get fucking fat. I could be driven by the fat cunt in three or four months. I could be as fat as that stalker guy from Norway who makes... He's made over 100 videos about me. I could get as fat as him, you know, probably a, in at least a month or two, you know? Big bitch tits, big man boobs. And hey, just because someone's fat doesn't make them a bad person. I could get a big, thick, fat face and a big, fat arms and 
big feminine sort of butt. And it doesn't make anyone bad if they have that. But if your goal is weight loss, then, like I said at the start of the video, get my eBooks, you know, and pay attention to what I'm saying. The fat you eat, the fat you wear. And I, I, but plenty of people out there who are fat. Oh, you're fat shaming. I'm not fat shaming. I'm telling you how to get fucking lean. And if you're sick of being fat, then fucking follow this advice. And if you're happy being fat, great for you. But understand it's not good for your health. And if you've got a family or people depend on you, then increases all your heart disease, your cancer, all these stroke, all these risks. And all of us, myself included, have come from a past of eating a lot of shit, maybe taking a lot of party drugs, and who knows how much damage we've done to ourselves. So why not start today eating healthier, living healthier, being healthier, thinking healthier? You know, all trolling aside, all fat Norwegian stalker jokes aside, all beat a cuck, Chiang Mai bicycle, sore pelvis jokes aside, you really want to look at your health. You know, you really want to look at your health because that is the best asset. That's the doesn't matter how light your bike is, if you got a big tub tub gut, or you don't have enough carbohydrates to push it. What's the point of having a six point five kilo S Works tarmac if you don't have enough thirty cents worth of sugar in your drink bottle so you can actually push the bloody thing up the hills? You know, what's the point of that? It's just it's dumb. So anyway, rice, fruits, sugars, all these things very very low fats. Sweet fruits very 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 low fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. That's why you see all these people like Dr. Mosley, the 5-2 diet, all this stuff, 800 calories a day. That's anorexia. That is anorexia. You know, anorexia. That's what it is. Anorexia is what Michael Mosley is promoting. 800 calories a day. For how many weeks was it? I think it was like a few weeks. It was two months. Two months. This, this motherfucker's on TV. He's getting promoted by universities. Oh, yeah, just, let's do... That's fucking dangerous as fuck. If you're driving a car or operating motorized vehicles, a forklift at work, and you're, like, spacing out because you had 800 calories, you're in ketosis, and you go and kill someone, that's fucked, man. You kill someone because you're following some anorexic, calorie restriction, fucking fad weight loss diet you saw in the morning show. That is fucked. But that's what's happening. I see it in the cycling world. I dominate... All these, not all. The only guys who dominate me are the, the guys at the Institute of Sports Scholarships or the guys who could be pro or should be pro. They're the only, and they train the fucking house down. They're the only guys who beat me on the hills. And maybe it's been about 10 seconds or a minute or whatever. I can still see them at the top most of the time. There's a couple of 10, 20 guys in my state who can beat me. Or well, 41 now as well. So it says something about this lifestyle. But the average cyclist is getting slower and fatter and slower. And I'm all for anyone on being on the bike. I'm all for it. So I'm not, I'm not making fun of anyone. If you're on a bike, thumbs up for me. If you're going 2K an hour or 50K an hour, thumbs up. I'm just saying that it's really, it sort of pains me a bit. It generally does pain me a bit when I see cyclists out there who are trying to get some performance and they're following these fucking anorexia plants and they're starving themselves and their moods drop and then now their doctors are saying, hey, they go to the doctor with anxiety or whatever because they have so much fucking coffee to try and run, run their show. And then they get an anxiety and depression. They go to the doctors and they get all Zoloft and Prozac and all these other toxic medications that make them gain a shit ton of weight for various reasons. And then they're gaining all this weight. They're feeling slow as fuck. They're getting stodged up as fuck. They're only 800 calories a day. Is it just me or is that fucking suicide? Is that lifestyle suicide? I've got this Victoria's Secret model, young, hot Indian filly here, and I love enjoying my life. You know, I love riding my bike. I've got all these bikes to ride, I've got all this time to use, I've got this money to spend. That for me is fucking quality of life. And there's no way in hell I'm going to be some undercarb space cadet following some 800 calorie day diet. What if you've got kids or a wife or a husband or a business where people really depend on you? That's cheating them. You're cheating yourself. Get my ebooks. Carb the fuck up, please. Have as much fruit, rice, sugar as you want. Water, chug in the water so you're pissing every two or three hours. If people aren't saying, wow, you're pissing a lot, you're dehydrated. All right. So just piss clear. If your urine's yellow or straw, drink more. Seriously, get my ebooks, follow the advice. It might sound salesy, but this is the best information out there. Don't get schemed. You know, don't get fucking scammed. Don't get ripped off. Don't destroy your health. Enjoy your life, man. You know, I wouldn't trade my life style or anything for anyone. I wish I could go back 20 years and change a few things, yeah. But my current lifestyle, I wouldn't change nothing. 
If you get me a billion bucks, I'll still be doing the same shit. Maybe I'll do more troll stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Employ actors and stuff for some troll videos. But I'll, I'll, I'll do everything the same. I'll still be on fucking YouTube. I'll still be selling my little ebooks. I'll still be riding my bikes. I'll still be going to the shops. I'll still be having feral pussy. Where is that feral pussy? In my fucking house. Just as I love my lifestyle, man. So uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything out there. So I'm not... Uh, I don't have this lifestyle because I, I starve myself or, I, you know, you miss out, man. Whenever you don't eat enough carbohydrates, you genuinely, genuinely, not generally, genuinely miss out on life. Carb the fuck up. Get that sleep in. Get the waters in. Just try it, man. And fucking do it. And you'll be fucking loving it.